Carrying as an AD carry is one of the hardest ordeals in League of Legends, but even when challenger ADCs play a master elo, they can 1v9 as well as anyone. So how do they make a master AD carry look like a noob? What's up game weeper? The chill oh, back at it. And in today's video, you are going to learn how to solo win bot lane just like one of the best AD carries in Korea. Now, as you scroll down to like the video, we are going to be watching three laning phases from Fred of Brion's professional ADC, Henna. So let's get right into it. And the first thing he does is ping the enemy jungler's blue buff because Nar shows topside. 95% of the time, this means the other side of the map is leashing, and this also means Hannah should not get ganked for a few minutes, knowing the enemy jungler will be pathing towards his top side of the map. But Jin and Karma appear in lane first, with full mana. This gives us two pieces of information. So what do you think they are? Well first, because they have full mana, they probably did not leash, so the enemy jungler could well have started at its red buff, knowing this is easier to solo than the blue buff. And second, because Jin and Karma are in lane first, as you can see, this means they have the push, but it's definitely not clear cut. This this is why Hannah keeps auto attacking the minions because there is still a chance Lulu and himself can hit that all important level 2 power spike first. Now this is a very nice tactic, last hitting with an ability and hitting an enemy champion at the same time. And after contesting the wave like this you can see how close this fight for the push is. Now Hannah quickly backs away from his own minions and this is because Jin has his dance and grenade off cooldown and he obviously doesn't want to take any free damage if he can't retaliate. So in the bottom left you can see his volley is on cooldown. But as soon as Jin uses his Q, Hannah immediately postures on top of his melee minions, knowing he will win an auto tag trade because he has Halo Blades. Unfortunately though, he decides to last hit this minion instead, and this opens himself up to an auto tag from Jin. But at this point in the lane, it's really inconsequential because he is prioritizing the push. This second wave is the wave you will hit level 2 off, so even sacrificing a bit of health to spend your time focusing on the push is totally worth it. Now as soon as Hedder and Lulu are about to hit level 2, what do they do? They move up while last hitting this third melee minion. This gives them the chance to catch out their opponent and this is exactly what happens. But it's important to note the enemy's cooldowns and specifically for a champion like Jin, his shots. He uses his fourth shot to last hit this minion and even though this gives him and Karma level 2, he is stuck reloading for the first two seconds of this fight. So Karma is really 1v2ing and it's also beautiful League of Legends from Hena. Even though Jin is not a threat, he doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage from the secondary target. So in order to isolate Karma and avoid Jin, he moves south. Jin cannot touch him and they pick up first blood and they also get Jin's flash and heal. Now what do you do in this situation? Well you hard push of course and if your support doesn't help you do this like this high elo Lulu, you ping them or type to them. You want your support to be an extension of yourself. Now after pushing this, Hannah definitely wanted to base but has faith in his support to make a play work. Never put faith in your teammates. Lulu ends up looking like a donkey and Hannah wastes important time but even after this bit of trolling from Lulu, they kill the Jin very soon. Now what makes this possible is their ability to disguise their intention and this has everything to do with your movement. When Hannah and Lulu back off, it looks as if they are just going to base with that first blood gold and return to lane. But because Hannah knows this is what the enemy bot lane is thinking, he uses this info against them. Now it is essential if you are to do this, to do it from the middle brush. This brush that is closest to Jin and Karma could well have been warded beforehand. Now because they're in fog and because Jin has no summoners, an on my way ping goes down and it's a free kill. But I have a question. How many of you would hard push this minion wave back into Jin and Karma? I think 99% of AD characters would, but this would be a big mistake. The best play by far, because the enemy minions outnumber Henna's minions by at least three, is to just recall. There are two reasons for this. One, the lane will still be in an excellent position when you return, and two, if you were to stay and shove, it will take way too long and Karma and Jin might be able to freeze it themselves. Now when Henna returns to lane, Karma has managed to push the minions so he misses a few of them, but Jin has missed practically that whole wave. That is the power of recalling against the push. Now Henna does not want to make Jin's life easier by just shoving the wave into him, so he simply lies hit. Lulu has also recalled, but the enemy support has not recalled, so Hannah technically is 1v2ing. When you are in a situation like this, it is crucial to stand away from that enemy support. So because Hannah can't see the karma in the lane itself, we can assume she is in one of these brushes. So Hannah, as a result, holds the top side of the lane, so if karma wants to do anything, what can she actually do? Now when Lulu returns, there's a fantastic little sequence here, and it all starts with Hannah using his W to last hit this cannon and to damage the karma. But did you notice what karma just used? Her Q, that's right. Right. This is what triggers Hanna to aggressively move up, but then he turns his attention to Jin because he is actually in range and Karma is not. Even if Lulu didn't shield Jin's fourth shot, Hanna would still hard win this trade, and this alone goes to show you the importance of recognizing cooldowns and positioning according to those timers. Now Hanna and Lulu keep up the pressure for the next few waves, and after recalling and returning to lane, Hanna is about to solo kill this Jin. Well, pretty much anyway. Karma just used her E, so no shield. And you can see Jin only has his fourth shot available, so if he uses it, he has to reload. And what 
what a surprise. As soon as he auto attacks this minion, Henna fires his arrow, catches Jin square in the jaw, and it's an easy kill. Henna shoves the next few ways, and as you can see, when he buys, is the only champion in the game with a mythic item. Now, Henna is also going to be the first one to his mythic item in this game because he gets so fed, and the first thing he does when he gets to lane as a Felios is he auto attacks this melee minion a few times. Because he's in lane first and the enemy bot lane is missing an action, this gives him a much better chance of hitting level 2 first. Now, after this little trade happens, why do you think Henna moves away from his minions? Well, he did the same thing in the first game. This is to avoid the splash damage from Ziggs's bomb, and as soon as this spell is on cooldown, he immediately pushes up looking to trade. He has the minion advantage and Ziggs doesn't have his Q. But when you are still only level 1, you never really want to run beyond your furthest minion because it's just extremely risky. So Henna waits for the next wave to collide and does not auto attack any minions at this point. Now why is that? Well, this is because he already has the push. You never want to push harder than you have to. Thresh ends up landing a nice hook and they get Time Kench's exhaust and this push and poke playstyle continues for a few ways until suddenly Thresh goes for a roam. Now this will happen all the time in your games and the enemy bot lane should do what Time and Ziggs do, look to kill you. But Henna is so switched on that when he sees Ziggs looking in his direction, he knows Ziggs is about to throw a spell. So instead of running away, he actually runs towards the enemy bot lane and dodges the explosive charge. And when Time Kench turns around and looks at him the same way, he moves to the left to bait Time into throwing his tongue out where Henna would run, only to quickly move back and waste Time's Q. Mechanically nuts. Now Time Kench is about to die in this lane and Thresh lands a nice hook, but we never want to just headbutt two enemy champions. So Henna moves north to try isolate Time Kench and avoid Ziggs. Now Ziggs does a great job in harassing Henna during this trade, but because Henna moved towards that primary target, he is now behind his own support, so Kench can't turn this around. And he picks up the kill with a Gravitum auto attack, and because Ziggs forgets that Aphelios' purple weapon has a root, he dies to Viego shortly after. Henna shoves the wave, recalls, and has a Noon Quiver and Boots compared to Ziggs's Tear and Doran's ring. Now, lots of AD carries in this position would clear these minions. Henna kills one of them and then chills, knowing this lane will freeze in this position. He then positions close to the minion wave collision because Thresh and himself have so much room to chase their enemies down, but it is risky to fight here. Look at the map. The only vision they have for boss side is their tri brush and this lane brush, and there is every chance the enemy jungler is hovering somewhere else, waiting for Aphelios and Thresh to be aggressive and use their lead. This is why Henna does not commit to anything and simply maintains this freeze. Now, a fight does eventually break out, and can you believe it? The enemy kindred shows up. So it's important to know how aggressive you can be, and the map is your friend in this regard. Now, Ziggs is about to die again, and when Thresh lands this hook, Henna does the same thing. He stays at max auto attack range from both of these enemy champions, and understanding that Time Kench does Abyssal Dive as the key cooldown to dodge, he flashes it and towards the primary target, and Ziggs hits the deck. Now, this is a very different scenario, but one we have all been in. The whole enemy team is in the mid lane, and we are hitting this bot tower on our own, but we have no vision of the bot side of the map, and because the enemy team has complete control over that area, staying this pushed up is suicide. So Henna patiently waits for his team to get back on the map, and he is actually going to kill this Ziggs for a third time. So after Henna backs off the tower, as Ziggs may well assume he's recalled, but Henna again five heads this information and conceals his position in this middle lane brush. Now he can confidently move into this next brush, knowing Ziggs has not had access to the lane for a good minute or two, so it's likely not warded. And he ambushes the Ziggs and gets another kill. As a result of this, he has his Gale Force at level seven. Now in this last game, he doesn't have to leash, so he immediately auto attacks one of the three melee minions to secure the push, exactly the same. Now in your games, your support will probably be sitting there AFK, so ask for assistance on the wave. If they still don't auto attack the minions, then you might have to type up a storm. Now the next minion wave arrives in the lane and Henna again auto attacks the first melee minion so his side can get to level 2. Now his positioning as he hits level 2 is critical. He moves up as far in the lane as he can, so he auto attacks this level 2 minion as close to the enemy champions as possible. And as soon as level 2 hits, he moves even further up, and even though Thresh and himself can't kill the Ezreal and Karma, they end up denying this minion so Ezreal is still level 1 when he should be level 2. But he actually makes a mistake here, that he is not made in the other games. When Thresh hooks Karma, she is the primary target. And because we want to isolate this Karma and avoid Ezreal, Henna should auto attack and deal damage here while moving below Karma. Instead, he stands in between the two enemy champions, and it's okay ish because Ezreal is still level 1. But how many of you would flash for the Karma here? Well, this would be a huge mistake because Ezreal simply has heal. So Henna disengages. Now, Thresh dies shortly after, and Henna is left to 1v2 for a wave or two. Now, Ezreal, after shoving this wave, is definitely going to recall here. So after clearing these minions, what should Henna do? Should he recall himself, or should he stay to push the wave? 
wave. Well, if he stays to push the wave, there is no guarantee he pushes in time to crash these minions under the enemy tower, so he uses this time instead to recall and mash the Ezreal. When he gets back to lane, the waves are still in a very favorable position, and he really hasn't missed that much. Now, speaking of missing something, do not miss out on the chance to sign up to the Game Week website. We have the Challenger tier courses, guides, and VOD analyses you need to improve on climbing the rift. Links are in the description and comment section, and make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until tomorrow's video, this has been the G. Oh!